we are looking at enhancing the number hunt project from the ybyte python curriculum uh, available at www.ybyte.in now number hunt is an interesting number game where the computer picks up a number we got to guess and then we guess a number we pick up a number computer has got to guess, got to guess now we have seen this previously that we can make this game quite interesting by picking up numbers from special lists for example say list of you know perfect squares or list of let's say prime numbers now let me just take you to a very interesting party game where you know a bunch of people get together and they must say all numbers which are not multiples of seven and also do not contain seven so for example you go one two three four five six you must say eight otherwise you get out or sometimes you say pass, let's say, in place of seven. Now, this is a very, very popular party game and it's quite fun. Let's say our computer wants to pick up numbers from this list. Now, this is interesting because what we will do is that we'll create a list which has no sevens and also no multiples of seven. Now, seven is just a number. You can change this to have no threes, no multiples of threes, no eights, no multiples of eights and so on and so forth. Let's see how we do this. It's again, code is very interesting. So I start with the list, say called, in this case, I'm just calling it sevens, though in the game, we just call it numbers. So I say, okay, look, I start with this list sevens. I just include in that one. Again, remember, uh, this is a list because a square bracket, it has just only one element, uh, which is one here. I start with the number KK is equal to one. Now the whole idea is that I'm going to go from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I'm going to keep doing this till the length of sevens becomes, let's say, equal to 100. So, you know, while uh, length of sevens is less than 100, because while loop, remember, will run, keep doing all this while this condition is true. So, the moment this condition becomes untrue, I will get out. Now, I will start with, you know, go to the next number. Now, remember, the logic is very simple. I do not want multiples of seven. So, I just check, okay, look, if the number that I have does not have, is not a multiple of seven, which means I said, okay, KK modulo 7 is not equal to 0. Modulo, remember, gives you the, you know, the remainder. So, KK modulo 7 is not equal to 0. Now, I need to check whether this number has a 7. So, for example, 17 is not a multiple of 7, all right, but 17 has a 7. Now, how do I do that? Well, I can convert KK into a string. Now, this is interesting because once I convert to a string, I can use one of the string methods, which is a find method to find if this number has a 7 or not. Now, string method find gives me a minus one if the string is not found now which means that for example 17 does have a seven so it will return me the index of seven but i want the numbers which do not have a seven if that happens then i just say okay go and append this to the list here so my my list keeps big, becoming bigger and bigger while the list is less than 100 i keep doing this i mean the length of list is less than 100 i keep doing this which means at the end of this i'll have list of 100 numbers which are not multiples of seven which are also do not have seven let's say so let's just see this in code it's quite uh, you know more interesting to see this all working so i come in here and i say okay look let me just you know previously i was doing let's say prime numbers here so i come in here i start with the list let's say numbers which is just one element and i create a variable called kk which is going to be my running counter so i say kk is also equal to one just like earlier i say while let's say len of numbers is say less than say 100 uh, so if you want to get 100 numbers for example i go and check let's say kk equals to kk plus one same as saying that well let's increase kk by one now i check if my kk is a multiple of seven which means that if kk modulo seven is not equal to zero now why do i do this because remember if kk modulo 7 is equal to zero it means kk is a multiple of seven i will just move on to the next number because i don't want to add this to my list on the other hand if kk modulo 7 is not equal to zero then yes it's not a multiple of seven but i've got more things to do i must make sure that kk does not contain seven and for that purpose i convert this you know kk into say uh, a string i call it kk underscore star and i use a string method called find I'm going to say, look, if kk underscore str, uh, you know, dot find, say, 7 is equal to minus 1. Now, what does this mean? This means that my string, the, the number which has been converted to a string, if it contains a 7, then I will get the index of that number. You know, I, I'll get the index of, let's say, um, uh, you know, where 7 is. On the other hand, if it does not contain a 7, then I'll get a minus 1. I'll show you this thing in action. Uh, so if it doesn't contain 7, then definitely this has to be appended to the list because this number is not a multiple of 7. It does not contain 7 either. So I guess go and say numbers dot append, for example, let's say, uh, you know, 
kk and this is really all i need numbers to depend means go and add this to the numbers now just to make this a little bit more clear let's put a few prints over here let's say print say numbers right so that you know we can uh, see how this thing is working and you know 100 is just too many so let's just do first 10 numbers right so so when i run this you know i start with for example one now let's just go through this one by one so first number i come in i ask myself is one a multiple of seven well one modulo seven is in fact one so that's not equal to zero which means that one is not a multiple of seven clearly and in order to now check for me to check whether one contains seven or not i convert one into a string uh, obviously this is trivial because we know this right away one i convert what i convert sorry one to a string that is one now if i were to do let's say you know say one um, dot find for example seven now this gives me a minus one because obviously that string does not contain seven on the other hand let's say i had done you know 17 contains say uh, find seven i will get a one because 17 is contained on index number one if i did let's say for example you know one zero seven that gives me two that's not a minus one you know uh, because again it's at index number two if i did what's let's say one seven seven i will still get a one because that's where the first find was first seven or so we'll look at this you know in a lesson later but the idea is that if i'm getting a minus one that means the number does not contain seven and hence i'll append this to the numbers list and that's what is going on here i start with one i go to one two one two three one two three four one two three four five one two three four five six when it comes to seven clearly seven is a multiple of seven so seven modulo seven is zero I just move to the next number 8 9 10 11 in fact if i just let's say made this say first 20 numbers it's quite interesting because we'll notice that 17 and stuff will get stuff uh, so i got let's say 13 14 was skipped from here because 14 is a multiple of 7 notice also 17 has been skipped as well which is what we wanted remember numbers that are multiples of 7 or contain 7 right so now with this done i can take these prints out because you know they occupy a lot of space so i'm just going to remove this print uh, and my list is now ready you know it has all numbers so let's say i say numbers notice it contains oh so i so i can just generate let's say say 100 of this and now when i run this you know i get for example so if i look at numbers i get 100 numbers and notice none of these numbers are you know for example take this 24 25 26 both 27 28 have been eliminated or have not been added because 127 contains a 7 28 is a multiple of 7 now we have got this list and this is pretty interesting because now we can make the game you know uh, let's say so i say uh, you know i've selected a number that is neither a multiple say multiple of 7 nor does it have a say for example have a 7 now you can obviously uh, you know make this messaging quite interesting uh, <clears throat> so i say can you guess and once again <laughs> so i hear i just say your guess was not valid in case i give a number which you know which did not meet this criteria so i say this was not valid and once again when it comes to me guessing it uh, you know once again once again when it comes to this uh, the computer guessing it i just say you select a number uh, that so number you select not a prime number but let's say select a number that doesn't have seven let's say I just do it slowly so that does not have seven and not a multiple of seven you can make it more beautiful but let's see this game in action now you know it's quite interesting so it picks up a number which is neither a multiple of seven nor does it have a seven can we guess so you know i'm going to start with let's say 55 okay so i try 55 that number is larger than that let's say i try 81 smaller than that now clearly the number is not any of the 70s because let's say i try 74 my guess was not valid because 74 clearly contains 7 so it's not 74 i'm going to try you know um, it could still be let's say 80 so i'll just try 80 number is smaller than that now it can't be 79 in fact it can't be anything until 70 so i'll try say 68 uh, you know smaller than that okay that makes it easier so i go to say 64 smaller than that let's say i try 59 smaller than that so i'm pretty much between 55 and 59 so it can't be 56 can't be 57 has to be 58 and that's correct right now i have to select a number nor the doesn't have seven nor a multiple of seven let's try let's say 16 one six let's see what happens right so i say okay click you know click enter when ready starts at one you know i say smaller than say i say larger than that 
SAS goes to 12. I said larger than that. Remember my number is 1616. Is it smaller than is 25? I say, well, smaller than that. It tries 13. I said larger, you know, smaller. Notice now it's starting to converge. I said larger. Uh, smaller, you know, is it 16? Yes, indeed, it is 16. Now, this is quite, quite, quite interesting. You can game, make the game quite interesting by, let's say, randomly picking up these lists. You know, of course, you have to put the messaging accordingly. So, you can say, okay, sometimes my game plays like a prime numbers. Sometimes my game plays with perfect squares. Sometimes it plays with, let's say, you know, these multiples of 7. You can even make this 7, like I said, into a, a variable. So, it becomes 5, 4, 3, 2, whatever. Really flexible game can come out of all this, putting all these together. You know, and it will be pretty, pretty cool. I hope you found this interesting. In general, if you think this way of learning makes it more interesting to learn, look at our website because that's how we learn programming through such fun activities. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.